Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to sculpt an animal sculpture using stoneware clay. I have an example of a rabbit that I sculpted a few years ago and um, as you can see I had to hollow out the form because otherwise it wouldn't have been able to go in the kiln and I couldn't have fired it. So there are some things that you need to know to get your piece from start to finish um, without it breaking in the kiln. Today I'm going to be doing a sculpture of a squirrel. So I have my image here that I'm going to be working from and I have all my tools. You can see I've got lots of different sculpting tools and lots of clay. So let's go ahead and begin. So sculpting is a lot like drawing in that when you start, you wanna look for basic shapes. So I'm looking for that basic oval shape of my head, the basic oval shape of the body, and then there's kind of an S shape for the tail. I'm gonna start with those shapes and then kind of add some of the different elements to the piece. So I'm gonna add my legs and my arms. You can go ahead and use any sculpting tool that will help you to do this, but try not to get too caught up in any of the details just yet. You'll add those later. And by details, I mean things like the eyes, nose, whiskers, the texture of the fur, um, those kind of elements you wanna save for the very end. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll be hollowing out the form or trying to shape it or change it and adjust it and you'll just mess those up anyways. So don't waste your time with that until you're finished hollowing it out. Okay, so I have all of my basic elements in place. I just marked where my eyes are going to go. I'll show you how to make realistic looking eyes in just a minute. And at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and start hollowing out the form. So butt jokes aside, the most practical place for me to start with this sculpture is the bottom of the piece. So that's where I'm gonna start hollowing out and scooping out as much clay as I can. Use your ribbon tool or any tools you have available to do this. Remember, if your clay is too thick, it will not survive the kiln because the water cannot evaporate. So it's really important that you're checking your piece and making sure that there are no parts of the clay piece that are going to be thicker than your pinky finger. So this part is really important. Be really careful to support your piece while you do this. The more clay that you pull from the inside, the more fragile your piece will become. So just use a lot of care here Take your time and make sure that you're doing it properly. There might be parts of your sculpture that you're not able to hollow out from the bottom. If that's the case, you're gonna have to cut them off and then hollow them out. So for example, I had to decapitate my squirrel so I could finish hollowing out his body and also to hollow out the head. And I also had to cut off the tail of my squirrel to get it hollowed out. Um, if you need to do that, you're just going to use uh, one of the string cutter tools and then um, go ahead and score and slip when you reattach those pieces so that they stay together and don't break apart. After your sculpture is completely hollowed out, it's time to add those finishing touches. So I have a wet sponge here that I'm using to help kind of clean up um, some of the rough areas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and re-sculpt some of the parts that got lost during the hollowing out process. I have a little trick for the eyes. Um, I take a ribbon tool and carve out an eye socket, making sure that my eye is lined up on both sides of the animal. After that, go ahead and shape some eyeballs that will fit into your eye socket well. You want them to protrude out, but not too far. 
And then I use a small coil and lay it across both the top and the bottom of the eye to create the illusion of an eyelid. The only area that I smooth out with this coil is the top part so that the eyelid looks like it's part of the face and not part of the eyeball. Depending on the level of detail here, you could also add a tear duct into the corner of the eye. I'm then going to use a sculpting tool to go ahead and add some of the elements of the eye, the iris and the pupil. I don't want a whole lot of detail on my squirrel, but I want to give it enough to give it a lifelike look. Once I'm finished with one side, I'll go ahead and complete the eyeball on the other side as well, using the same technique and checking to make sure that the sizes match up. Don't forget about texture. I don't want my, my squirrel to look smooth. I wanna to try to create the illusion of that fluffy tail and even the fluffy fur on the rest of his body. I'll use my sculpting tools, but I also wanna be careful not to create harsh, jagged edges that will make him unpleasant to hold um, or not look very neat when he's finished. You might have some scales or snakeskin, or I don't know, maybe there's another kind of texture that you can try to create. This is my finished piece. And I hope this video helps you to create something really special. I'll see you next time.